In this lesson, we're going to discuss singularity functions and their relationship with loading diagrams, free body diagrams, and shear and moment diagrams. So first, let's consider one of the most simple singularity functions. One of the most common singularity functions is known as the unit step function. And the unit step function says that the function is going to remain at zero for a period of time. Let's say that time is a. And then at a, the function is going to switch on. And from now on, it's going to have a value of 1 from now on. Okay. So the notation that you might have seen before would look something like this. Mu of x minus a. And what this means is literally 0 for x is less than a, and 1 for x is greater than a. And just to be complete in our discussion, uh, it's not really easy to describe exactly what happens at a. So it's 0 right until we get to a and it's 1 from then on but what happens right at the moment we arrive at a is a little bit of a mystery from a mathematical standpoint fortunately in engineering uh, we deal with uh, imperfect measurements all the time and we never really are exactly at a anyway so it's okay for us to kind of just leave that equal sign uh, um, the greater than or equal or the less than an equal out of it for our analysis Okay, so this is the most common singularity function, and what I'm going to do is introduce a new way of writing this function. So now I'm going to say that this is going to be equal to a bracket x minus a raised to the zeroth power. There's a reason we're doing this. This is going to allow us to start thinking about doing some some math on this, specifically some calculus, taking the derivative and the integral of of this step function and seeing how it does. So really the whole point of doing this is there is a singularity that occurs in the function. This function is not continuous from all the way until we get to a, it's 0, all the way after a, it's equal to 1, and it's discontinuous at um, x is equal to a. So this is why it's called a singularity function. It turns out that this is not the only function around. There are other um, singularity functions besides the step. And so I'm going to start with the step here. We'll put it kind of in the middle. And again, we're going to we're going to denote that of as x minus a raised to the zeroth power. I'm going to talk about a ramp function now. And we'll say that this is x minus a to the first power. And let me draw a little picture just to diagram what's happening here. There's the step function, so we'll say that this is a. The ramp function turns on and begins moving up. Above the step function, I'm going to put the impulse function, and it's going to be x minus a raised to the minus 1, and it looks like this. It's 0. There's a discontinuity at a, and then it's back to 0 again. And we'll do something that's called a doublet, x minus a to the minus second. I don't really have a way to pictorially show that. I'm going to do this, though. I'm going to show it as an arrow. And I'll talk about what that means in just a minute. Below the ramp, let's do one more below the ramp. Um, It's going to be the parabolic, and it's going to look like this. At A, it's going to begin a parabola, a parabolic shape occurring right there at A. So it turns out there is a relationship between these. It's probably most easy to see between the ramp and the parabolic. This formula for the parabolic, x minus A squared, excuse me, let me... Let me leave off the divided by 2.
the, so just to go back and clarify, the parabolic function is defined as x minus a to the second power, not divided by 2. Some definitions for this. So this is the name of the function, of the singularity function. This is its equation. Um, this is its representation. I'll call it rep for short. This is its integration. So we're going to find some patterns here, but um, don't worry too much about the details about why this works. There's some fairly high level math as to why these singularity functions integrate the way, the way they do, but the, the important thing for you to know is that the doublet, as it integrates, becomes the impulse. So the integration of the doublet is actually x minus a to the minus 1. It is the impulse. If I integrate the impulse, I get the step function. If I integrate the step function, I get a ramp function. Now this gets a little tricky. If I integrate the ramp function, I'm going to get the parabolic function divided by 2. And if I integrate the parabolic function, I'm going to get another function raised to the third over 6. Okay, so it's kind of interesting. Actually, it looks like integration, just like normal integration for the powers above 0. But the, the one that's strange is this power uh, less than 0. The two of them integrate. Um, negative 2 just goes to negative 1 without, um, without any of the fractions. So last thing I want to point out about this, and this is why we're discussing this today, is it turns out that these are represented in space. So this represents. So let's start with the import pulse. This represents concentrated force. This one represents a moment. And again, I don't know that I can convince you graphically. This definitely looks like a concentrated force. So that's not surprising. Why a concentrated moment is represented by a doublet, it's harder for me to understand graphically. Um, step function is a uniformly distributed load. I'll just put distributed load. The ramp would be a linear load, linearly distributed. And then the parabolic will be a quadratically distributed load. We probably won't do any of those, so I'll leave that, I'll leave that alone. So. It turns out this idea of integrating combined with another interesting point, and, and the next interesting point is I can write the results of my free body diagram as a loading function. And now we're going to start calling that free body diagram function q of x. Then we're also going to be talking about the shear function, which we've already um, we've already looked at this analytically by considering free body diagrams and moment functions. It turns out that there is a relationship between these functions. And the relationship is q of x is equal to dv of x dx. And v of x is equal to m of x dx. In other words, if I have the loading function and I integrate I will arrive at the shear function. If I have the shear function to integrate again, I'll arrive at the moment function. This means if I were to express my free body diagram as a loading diagram, without doing analysis step by step along the way, I can go directly to shear and moment diagrams. So let's look at the example we did last time and consider how that would work. So the example we did before had a concentrated load with two supports, and I've already done the free body diagram analysis to understand what the reaction forces are, 800 pounds, and reaction forces of 200 pounds. Let's write this now as Q of x. So first thing I need to do is consider when things turn on. I have a positive concentrated load that turns on when x is equal to 0. So we'll say 600 times x minus 0 and a concentrated load, a concentrated force, was an impulse function. So this is to the minus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to subtract 800 x minus 5, turns on at 5 inches, minus 1. 
And then if I go all the way down to the end, we'll have plus 200 x minus 20 raised to the minus 1. Now if this works correctly, what I ought to be able to do is recognize that v of x is equal to the integral of q of x dx, which is going to be equal to 600. Now x minus 0 is the same thing as x, so x to the 0th minus 800 x minus 5 to the 0 power plus 200 x minus 20 to the 0th power. So now let's think about what this means. What this means is the 600 turns on immediately. Okay, so let's look at what this looks like. Let's say here's x. The contribution for this term right here at x equals 0, it's going to go up to 600 and it's going to stay on forever, all the way for infinity. Okay? That's the contribution for that first term. The second term at x equals 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. At this term, we're going to now subtract 800. So its contribution is, if this is 0, nothing happens until 5, and then it drops down 800, and it continues forever. The third one is um, positive 200 again, and that happens at 20. So let me draw one more. Right here at 20, this goes up, and there's its contribution. And it turns out that if you add these together, so positive 600, this is 600, minus 800, and then positive 200 here. When you sum them all together, superposition, recognizing how they're all playing with each other, what you'll get is exactly what we got before. It's going to go up to 600 at the beginning. At 5, it's going to go down 800, which will take us to minus 200. And at 20, it's going to go up 200 and stay there at 0. Okay, So our shear diagram matches exactly what we found using free body diagrams without having to consider um, everything else. And it's, it looks like I'm looking back here and seeing that I didn't turn 200 on at 20. I turned it on a lot, long time after 20, so let me fill that back in. There we go. Okay. So that's how we can get a shear diagram. Let's do the same thing for a moment diagram. Okay, so going back now and starting with the shear diagram that we just derived, and remember that m of x is the integration of v of x dx. So let's integrate this function. 600 integrated x is now a ramp minus 800 x minus 5 to the first power plus this last term, 200, x minus 20 to the first. Now, I want to go ahead and point out that this is not even turning on until we're finished with the beam. So it turns out I really don't even need to evaluate this last term because it only affects the equation when the equation is no longer on the beam. And all I care about are the things that are on the beam. Okay. But whether you include it or don't will not change your answer because it's not affecting anything on the beam. So let's see what's happening first, this one. The first thing that's going to happen is right away, you're going to have a ramp function that turns on immediately. That's going to have a rise of 600. So we'll just do it like this. And I'm going to need to put dotted lines fairly quickly. It's going up forever. Okay. So this is the 600x. This one turns on at x is equal to 5. So the second term will turn on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 here. And it's going to be going down forever. 
and the third one again turns on at 20 but it's not really going to affect anything until after we're finished and if we were to superimpose these on top of each other we will get exactly what we calculated last time which was up until 5 it increases until it gets to 3000 right there at the top and then we decrease all the way until here's the 20 mark we get to 20 and then that third one would have turned on to cancel how it's continuing to decrease and so it would stay flat from there on out so my singularity functions achieved exactly what the analysis looking at uh, free body diagrams achieved.